All right, this is the championship match, a repeat of last year's final. Jennifer Capriati will remain number one in the world, regardless of the outcome. Hingis at number four in the world at the moment. Hingis serves. Very hot northerly wind blowing in Melbourne. Temperature in the mid 30s already. And I would think uh, temperature probably won't peak for another hour or so. So certainly could get to 37, 38. Tournament referee Peter Bellinger will be keeping a close eye on the thermometer because the uh, the new extreme heat rule is in force for these championships. 38 degrees is now the cutoff point. Game Hingis. First game to Martina Hingis. Comfortably. First game. And uh, once the temperature exceeds 38 degrees. Unusual in that uh, the players change opposite sides on of the court. Opposite the sides. Mm. And I had a feeling that uh, Martina was heading for that far side. And when she saw Jennifer go there, she changed her mind. Played with more than a racket and ball, I guess. Low 15. Beautiful angle volley here from Martina. And Jennifer struggling. Just back to the weather for the moment. Uh, the altered extreme heat policy. The roof will be closed if it surpasses 38 degrees. matches in progress on outside courts at the time would continue to their conclusion but no new matches would start. Ah! That of course isn't an issue at the moment because uh, all of the other championship 15, matches have been 14. completed. And here break points at the outset against Capriati. who is on the subject of fitness looking fitter and stronger than ever in her career Fifteen. Capriati heavily taped around the upper thigh and hip both sides Oh. 
Capriati suffered a hip flexor problem in a, uh, an exhibition event in Hong Kong before coming to Australia on one hip. And the same problem with the other hip in the tournament uh, in Sydney week before last. the smash from Hingis. Quickly, it's three love. In this leads, three games to. No, 81 82. Now, Brettel over one and 81, and uh, ever turned the tables the following year. Seems a long time ago when this event was played at Kuyong on grass. I called both those finals and they were two great matches. the call and challenging it. Nothing have changed. The score has been called. He has had moments with umpires that uh, have been regrettable. It was worth a question. You can see why she questioned that ball. Very fair. Capriati. Capriati on the board in the match. A great comfort to see the light go up against your name on the scoreboard. Fingers wins, three games two. Touching. That's the sort of uh, power hitting that's carried Capriati into the final again. And the 
a change coming over the match. Those three games were all Martina. Three break back points. Advantage oh. is only a fraction in it. Just becoming a little bit conservative and allowing Martina to be the aggressor again. Oh boy, there is a great physical and mental battle going on out there. She does not like the call. Didn't like the call on the baseline earlier in the point. And I don't think was that charmed by the backhand being called wide. But uh, too out of breath to run a challenge. Oh, that's so right good. on the line. Even Capriati chipped the uh, umpire. Oh, Monica definitely coming off second best, and that was a critical call. Jennifer That's not it. happy. Eluded me there. I, <laughs> Capriati must have conceded the point. Can she do that after the umpire has called the score? I suppose she can. We we saw it once earlier. In, in uh, but the ball was still in play. Is uh, what I don't understand. So even if the ball is corrected and called in, the point should have been replayed. It wasn't a winning hit. No. Well, I'm confused here. Very Tight. very hot on the centre court. And a little uh, higher in the humidity stakes for uh, Melbourne than is normal. And uh, you see just behind Martina there, the ball boys and ball girls allowed to sit on the side of the court for the finals of the men's singles and the women's singles. That's a lovely tradition. It works so hard, often in Please, very hot conditions. You. One four.
15. Oh, Hingis is making Capriati work very hard. It'll be a question of whether she can go the distance in the conditions. Well, Hingis lucky to survive in her own service game previously, now gets another break. Hingis leads five games to one. used in the final last year. She really exhibited all out aggression. And uh, Hingis is appealing over another close ball on the baseline. She's been right each time she has challenged a call to this point. Have a look at this one. Maybe not right that time. Log 40. Well, applause from Stefano Capriati for his daughter, but she's still down two breaks. Hingis leads five games to two. And I think Hingis has come out a lot sharper, keeping in mind what happened to her in the first set against Sellers in the semi-finals. She's much more on her toes and uh, ready to go right from the outset.
And Capriati, with shots like this, has been able to dictate to most of the players she's met in the tournament to date. Well, it's Jennifer's turn to complain. The first one I thought was good. The second one was definitely questionable. It goes to show that uh, both players are on edge, as you can easily imagine. That's good. Opportunities for Jennifer Capriati. <laughs> Capriati shakes a fist at the linesman. Fourth game again. Hingis leads five games to shoot. And Hingis will have another attempt at serving it out. Testing rally finished off at a forehand by Capriati. Beautiful full swing and uh, abandoning the caution that she had earlier in this match. For the improved line calling uh, ability of the base linesman. I think it's taking time here. It's disturbing Martina, I think, this it little is. by play. Yeah. She wants to settle down and uh, concentrate at this crucial stage. And there is a lot 15, of tension 15. on the court between the two players. This is the ninth time these two have played. Hingis leads head to head, five to three. But uh, Capriati won the last time they played, and that was at the French Open last year. They haven't played since then. Amazing.
Set point finally for Hingis. Capriati beat her in the semi finals at Roland Garros in straight sets 6 4 6 3, and then, of course, went on to win the final. Forehand and backhand, the winners are starting to come for Capriati. Deuce. Jennifer really going for her shots now, right in that corner. Hingis under pressure. Ah! Advantage, Capriati. Boy, what a turn up this would be. Oh. It's out. Capriati gets back on serve. Hingis has served for the first set twice and has been unable to close it out. Yes, she was uh, drawn to play doubles at night and she was expecting to have to play Serena Williams the next afternoon. And uh, I think it was a bit of precaution there rather than incapacity. So Capriati is right back in it and uh, Hingis's mental confidence has taken a severe sh shaking. That's the first backhand winner that Hingis has hit in the match. Well, his first set has had more twists and turns than the Monte Carlo rally. <laughs> Reset points. Oh. But even at Love 40, Martina uncertain of herself, tentative, catching the frame on two consecutive drives from the baseline. The set, set finally to Martina Hingis in 33 minutes. By six games of
just as importantly, other people are probably expecting it to win. But, uh, the burden of expectation. Doesn't matter how many winners she hits, she's going to need to cut down on the unforced errors. Go, and Hingis is set in one love. This game is second. single-minded uh, person that she is. I don't think she's going to make the same mistake she did in the first set, Hingis. Oh. Not uh, when she gets in front and she's had the advantage of serving first now in the second set. Capriati may have won the point. I think this might have lost it, whichever way you want to look at it. But Capriati did all the running. 15. Capriati raises her hands in the middle of the rally. Getting desperate now. And she wants this linesman off. I think she wants the umpire off. Sandra Lejenkin, the umpire from. Wow. Capriati cutting loose. She wants to be kept. Well, she's going to be in strife, Capriati. Well, that's very surprising for Jennifer. And really, it shows you the uh, level of anxiety and tension. And uh, unfortunately for Jennifer, the replay shows that the call may well have been correct and certainly not a ball that you could expect the umpire to overrule, Gary. No think? way. No way. She's from France, uh, the umpire, but she does understand English, doesn't she? I don't know whether she would have learnt those words at uh, language school. I'm Harry, surprised so she may that have been uh, spared. I'm surprised that something wasn't said. So surprised by Jennifer's uh, language. So it's not norm, it's uh, totally out of character. She's obviously feeling the pressure. Well, I've just paused there, waiting for a blow-up, but there hasn't been one. Not another one. 
I think the linesman was entitled to call that ball or not to call that ball out. 15. And Jennifer needs to compose herself. She's allowed herself to get upset. Uh, her perception is that she's been badly done by. That's the best sort of reply she could come up with. Get on with the job. 15. And a terrific volley from Martina just to get that back into court. And Jennifer recommitted. And you might have heard Martina then saying, same, same. Some players are superstitious if they win a point with a ball. Oh. Stinging forehand back. from Hingis for the game. Three love in the second set. She took the first 6-4. Well, she needs a whole new mental approach, Jennifer Capriati. It's not that she was on the wrong track earlier. She, she was in the thick of the match. But she did get... Uh, She did get four very close calls or non-calls. One of them, she may have been right. The other three, the linesmen, were definitely right. Just a lapse of concentration trying a drop shot from beyond the baseline. I think both players felt that the first serve was so vital because of the heat in Melbourne today that the chances of coming back and winning in three would be slight. Well, this is where Capriati can decide to put herself back into it or not. And it might be not because it's break point. That shot actually looked to me like she may be suffering from the hip problem again. In that she didn't follow through comfortably about halfway, just shortly after the moment of impact, she lifted off as if there may have been a twinge. She's losing a little bit of strapping. Yep, it's coming adrift. She struggled with it right through.
Well, can she come back from two breaks down in the second set? Well, on current form, there is no way. Jennifer is a great fighter. And that was a let. And the players are really aggravated with each other now because Jennifer hit the ball knowing it was a let. When it wasn't called, she was willing to try to take the point. And that would really irritate uh, Martina. That's a great winner. It was rather carefree abandoned by uh, Capriati. Marvelous reach. He's having to go with the single hander. Bizarre. No more reason. A very, very lackadaisical double fault from Martina Hingis, and that's one break back for Capriati. Maybe she can. Beautiful blue sky and the summer's day in Melbourne. It's very warm. Well into the 30s. At 35, 36 degrees at the moment. Anything could happen here. It's still 4 1, Hingis in the second set. But uh, Capriati's got one break back and now serving. Seeming to overwhelm Martina. And Jennifer really getting the better of things now, and Martina almost appears to be heat affected. She's really let go, and Jennifer is motoring on strongly. Jennifer spends a lot of time in Florida, so she's used to this type of weather. Great thinking by Hingis. She was lucky to stay in the point. It was bad luck for Capriati. Just the net cord prevented her making the winner and gave Hingis the opportunity to loft up the lob. It's a must-hold game for Capriati. Oh. Oh, just have an extraordinary match from 40 love to juice. Then the most 
critical point. Advantage, <laughs> Unforced error from Martina. And she responds in sort of a girlish way by pointing, pulling her, her tongue out. Why would you categorise poking the tongue out as a girlish way? Just because it happens to you a lot. It just looks so cute the way <laughs> she did it. Look like my 11 year old. Too good. Perfect judgment from Hingis. A tough shot to make. It gives a break point. Advantage, Hingis. It's a fine drop shot, that one. Jennifer really tried. Critical game, this one. Oh, this is a great contest. Jennifer's mother is over here also. Hard advantage, Gabriel. And Jennifer really working Martina very hard in this point, and Martina does seem to be a little bit distressed from the heat. And despite the outburst earlier from Capriati, I think uh, the way she's come back here, fighting back, is a testament to her maturity mentally. Well held. Despite a break back point to uh, Hingis. Hingis. Four games to two. And she is still up the break, remember? But that would have just uh, dumped the match in her lap if Capriati hadn't been able to hold. Hingis, is, you're right. Look at walking back into the shadowed area at the back of the court, and you could see the look on her face there that she really is feeling this. Her eyes closed for some time now. She's trying to uh, calm down, try to stay cool. And just gather the energy to win two more games. Well, the thing that's going to suffer and is suffering first is Hingis's serve. It's just losing a bit of its bite. And Dante has a lot to start with. And she's trying to shorten up every point. Did it with uh, perfect judgment. An element of luck in it, though, I think. This uh, volley lob just <laughs> catching the line. kilometers per hour that second serve the two first serves before it were 124 and 132 kilometers per hour and those areas are just coming from 
the effects of heat. 15, 14. Two chances for Capriati to get the second break back and put herself right back in the second set in the match. Feeling the heat. There's no two ways about it. 35 degrees in Melbourne at the moment, but we are sure much warmer on the centre court. There's the break back. It's now four games to three. Hingis leading, but back on serve. At 35 degrees is what the judgment is made on though as to uh, whether or not the extreme heat policy comes into play now Hingis is leaving the court again it's her turn there's Jennifer trying to cool down there is no uh, privacy for these players they are distressed there is no two ways about it and uh, the manners are improving earlier in the game when she had an unfortunate outbreak. But uh, the, both players really suffering this uh, extreme heat. She so, sent a security man for a bag of ice. Now both these players suffering, both of them are being very seriously affected by the heat. Remember, 35 degrees is, is the official temperature in Melbourne at the moment air temperature down on the center court remember we're enclosed in this huge bowl so there's uh, very little breeze it's suffocating down there and uh, the court surface has a rubberized subsurface to it and it, it just draws in the heat and on the court surface itself or sort of you know The temperature can get to 50 degrees. Yes, it's not uncommon that it's gone uh, to 50 or more, the actual surface. And uh, it can be most unpleasant for the players. And uh, it's been an issue for the last uh, two weeks, the uh, playing on hard surfaces. WTA Tour executive uh, Georgina Clark speaking with uh, Sandra De Jenkin as uh, Hingis returns she's had a complete change of uh, clothing Brenda Perry on the left former New Zealand number one player now a uh, tour supervisor for the WTA There's some iciness between these two players. You can see Martina just totally avoiding Jennifer, looking away from her. Which even happened at the conclusion of the first game, Gary. Sorry. Remember, we pointed out that the players changed on opposite sides of the net. Yeah. Now, Martina just uh, extending this break, knowing that Jennifer has gone out. And there is... Uh, Another little by-play. A little bite. <laughs> by-play. Well, Hingis has got a, is working to break a hoodoo here. She's played in 11 Grand Slams since her last victory here in Perfect on the line. He has 11 Grand Slams since that victory. She's been in numerous semi finals and a couple of finals, but uh, not able to snare another title. when you consider the strategy of taking a break before this game. 
love touching. It's really uh, taking advantage of the rules in place that do allow the players to leave to go to the bathroom. Setting the timing and the concentration of Jennifer Capriati. Who knows precisely why the break was taken. Lining up for our tenth break of serve here. Capriati, tremendous reply from Hingis, just missed. I don't know why you say that, Gary, because if you've been watching this match, you'd know that 40 love up or love 40 down really has little effect on the outcome of the game. This has been so many turnarounds. And there are still two game points to be had for Martina. Continues to buck the odds. Extraordinary match. The leads that have been lost, both in uh, points in games and games in sets. But you can't yeah, buck I mean, the odds forever. Martina and Jennifer immediately go to the shaded areas of the court. Martina sitting down on an umpire's chair. Hingis leads five games to three. And Hingis will now be serving for the match. Remember, she was up two breaks, served twice for the first set, couldn't get it, then had to break Capriati's serve again to clinch the set by six games to four. She was up a double break here at 4-1. Capriati got them both back. But now Hingis again in the ascendancy and serving for the match. Distress showing in Martina's young face. Mom concerned. She lost the point, but you've got to give some credit to Capriati. The balls just keep coming back at Hingis. 15, 30. <laughs> 30 all and just two points from the title.
Match point for Martina Hingis. Fourteen, thirty. under fire from Jennifer Capriati. That Harage. took some interstitial fortitude. <laughs> yes, to go for your shots. Match point down. Incident just before that point. A cameraman running onto the court thinking the match was over. Not over. How many I turns and be twists be can the match take? They are playing each other to a standstill. A double fault. Capriati breaks again. She is still in it. It's not over. A long way to go. Well, could have been a different story in the first set with uh, Hingis up a break at 4-1, but down, love 40. But for an extraordinary overall by the umpire, Hingis held onto a serve, then got a further break. But from two breaks up, couldn't serve it out. Capriati got back, then dropped her serve to give Hingis the set in 33 minutes. Players are ready. Thank you. Both players have been off for breaks in this set. We've had a... A fierce verbal outburst from Capriati, the linesman, over a close call in the, uh, the second game of the set. And she holds for five ball, Capriati. What a final. Despite obvious distress in the heat, the two of them just continue to slug away. Turning to the lines person, looking for the call. 
After 15 two very on. deep balls, one from each end in that point. Martina Hingis might well be the best female tennis player in the world, but Jennifer Capriati is the most obstinate. <laughs> sort of stubborn to a fault. She is fighting back. Thirteen, fourteen. Beautifully played point from Martina, who's found a way to compose herself early in the game. She was making unforced errors early in the point has been uh, the trait when she has been fatigued. Go, Hingis. Hingis leads six games to five. In an extraordinary Australian Open final. I think Martina is slightly worse off than... Uh, Jennifer at this moment though she might be a little bit better but uh, than she was well Capriati she's... was born and raised in these conditions wasn't she yes I don't get too many days like this in Switzerland not since the ice age Symptom of fatigue. Fifteen. Simply never plays a wild shot like that. So look at this ball on the baseline. She very, very close. That's a straight out unforced error. Lack of timing on the shot. Another indication of uh, the heat affecting Hingis. 25 unforced, 26 unforced errors from her. 29 from Capriati. But Capriati has hit a ton of winners.
Well, the pressure cooker is on Capriati's serve again at 30 all, 5 6. Delta. match point she served four double faults in the match it's been an important point every time but none more important than this one Jennifer having the courage again and down to go for a shot really unloading on the forehand the powering Martina This is Hingis's third match point. She had one on her own serve at 5-3, lost her serve. Thank you. Thank you. point the playing conditions altered markedly as one lone cloud passed over the stadium and that was played in shadow for the first time since the start of the match Dukes. Jennifer sitting down just absolutely exhausted and Martina likewise it's a standoff as Winston Churchill said peace through neutral terror And the crowd recognizing the difficulty of the players and applauding their efforts. Great play, great play by Capriati. Set up with another superlative forehand down the line. High advantage, Capriati. Capriati sits, Hingis leans exhausted on the uh, the Rado match clock. And the tiebreak might have its detractors, but I think it's a fitting way to determine the outcome of this set and possibly the outcome of the match before these two fall over. And the 
first point goes to Capriati with a clean winner. One zero, Capriati. Well, she's decided she's got to go for a shot in this crisis. Martina weakened in this sort of not at usual pace. Two, one, Capriati. They've traded a point each way. Two serves to come now from Martina Hingis. <laughs> now. Capriati once more. And Martina has smashed her racket. Three, one, Capriati. And she is going to have to change it at this critical time. Capriati gets the ball boy to bring her a bottle of water. I just can't believe how hot it is in the centre court. Still ahead in the tiebreak. <laughs> Levels up. Trail. Twice this game, Jennifer has failed on the backhand. It just seems that. Uh, Exhaustion takes control every now and again. Temperature down there probably 46, 48 degrees on the court level. But the official uh, temperature reading still 35 degrees. And that's the one on which the uh, extreme heat policy is based. It's not the court surface temperature that, uh, that counts. Martina just can't push herself any further. And Jennifer maintains Four, her strength of hitting. An exhausted Martina just falls short. We're still on serve in the tiebreak. Capriati had the advantage once, gave it back, twice, gave it back. Exhausted after every point, seeking shelter from this heat. 
At least Jennifer oh. has the advantage this time. She's sitting down behind the baseline on the umpire's linesman's chair in the shade. And Martina has the long walk in the heat. Just exhausted. And this really is cruel weather for both players. for Hingis. Five for Hingis. Martina just feeling so much uh, distress. So close and yet maybe so far. Well, we come back to a situation where Capriati can't afford a slip. Scream from Martina because it brings up set point for Capriati. Six, five, Capriati. Pincus has had match points, not in the tie break, but earlier in the second set. Now faces the possibility that the match might go into a third set. Oh, what a shot. Jennifer looking for the call. And no she way. accepts that the call is good. And what a courageous shot from Martina Hingis straight down the Six line. Four. Forcing the winner. Took the risk and was rewarded. Lingering in the shade. Again, they change on opposite sides of the court. Quickly asking for water, checking to see the progress of her opponent. Hingis stops at the chair, a lengthy stop now. She's on her way to the southern end of the court. Using every uh, possible advantage they can get. She's taken an ice bag with her around her neck. Which she'll hand along with the towel to the ball boy. A real gladiatorial contest, this. And that brings up another match point. Seven, six, Hingis. For the fourth time. Really getting anxious about the call. The it, it came a fraction late, isn't, but correct. Isn't too much of a delay, but it seemed like a hundred years. And uh, mum being honest with her daughter and signalling that the ball was wide, was long.
Second set point for Capriati. Hingis takes out a frustration on the net cord. Eight, seven, Gabriel. Martina just going the wrong way, just couldn't get the racket on the ball. Just so frustrating for her. Can they withstand another set? Hingis flings the racket. Capriati takes the second set in the tie break. Nine points to seven. Population, racket abuse, warning Miss Hingis. And a warning for Martina Hingis for racket abuse. And this is certainly a dramatic uh, Australian Open final, as dramatic as, as we've had in, well, many, many a long year. And yet we wouldn't have been saying that 20 minutes into the start of it, would we? Uh, no, no, I th that, that's true. Uh, up, and, up until uh, the game at 4-1. It's untidy, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Final six. And then it just took on another, uh, another dimension. Please. And uh, it's just become more intense as time's gone on. And now it starts all over again. All square at one set all. Thirty love. And there's no extra energy put into that forehand by Martina. She Four just eight. stood on the half volley. Got lucky. Look at this, changing on opposite sides. It's Martina going to the far side this time. I don't think birthday cards will be exchanged between these two during the year. can foresee with uh, Lindsay Davenport Lord. going to be out of action for several months and uh, the Williams sisters limiting their appearances outside of the major tournaments. Won't be long before Hingis is number two again. So it's going to be a head-to-head -head contest for the number one ranking in the world between these two over the Thank next uh, foreseeable future, next 12 months. Let's serve up at 156, which is her fastest for the day. Average first serve 132. And the, uh, the heat of the closing stages of that second set, remember it was down to 124. Oh. Well, that's just an exhausted double fault. Falling flat on a foot as she was making contact.
And the heat is already taking a toll on Martina. Just in the second game back on court and uh, I thought that she may have come back a little bit more refreshed. Oh, well, Capriati strode back onto the court with uh, an air of confidence. And it has started out accordingly. Surviving the first test, Hingis, two break points down. Jennifer going to the shade, Martina staying in the sun. Ivan Lendl was the first one to discover the benefits of walking back beyond the court. Take advantage of the shade at either end. Just pressing a little bit too hard on the short ball, fractionally wide. But Hingis was just half a yard slow moving to a couple of those balls and she was a bit lucky. The forehand from uh, Capriati was out. Go, Hingis. Right, remarkably. 
Okay, He's got the break and leads by two, two games, games to one. Capriati made the error, but that was enough to get the break of serve. So Capriati had the break chances initially against the Hingis serve and failed. Hingis now has the break. We've had 11 breaks of serve. Both serving quite Players good first ready, serve percentages. You. Both winning a reasonable amount of points off the first serve, but it, the serve 15. of itself has not been a great factor in the match. Every time, Hingis has had the early break of serve. Oh, that's just, again, a collapse on a second serve. And that is simply fatigue. Very severe. And just pressing and then pressing, making the error. 13, 14. time of the day now. Okay, Gabriele. Token chase by Martina. Two games. And the match levels, and again, it's Jennifer Capriati who is looking by far the stronger of the two players. Mercury hovering just a fraction below 36 degrees. Thirty. 
13, 14. And Jennifer, again, courageous in a crisis, going for his shots, producing the widow when down break point. And she just missed. Advantage, Cabriati. Yeah. A game point for Capriati. And missed yeah, again. Game for Capriati. Three two ahead. We're on serve. We've had one break each way. Ladies and gentlemen, the trainer has been called to the court. And the massage really is a method of trying to relieve the. Uh, Fire just tying up. Good effort to move the build up of lactic acid out of the body. Martina take. Martina taking advantage and having the ice pack around her neck. Supervisor Georgina Clark having a word with uh, Hingis and with Carol Doherty, the uh, primary health care provider from the WTA. The trainer in any other language. <laughs> and I'm sure Martina will have both legs massaged. And Jennifer using the time to stretch so as her body doesn't seize up at all. But Jennifer's uh, improved condition. Over the last year, she's stronger, fitter, quicker, and really dedicated. Her strength is actually quite remarkable. I mean, she really is. She doesn't have the athletic profile of a Venus Williams or even winding the clock back. To a Martina Navratilova. Steffi Graf. Or a Steffi Graf, yes. But uh, her endurance is just beyond question. Yes, she's got uh, great strength of character and, uh, and physical strength to play on. And uh, here, just uh, trainer suggesting that. Uh, It's could be stretched like this and a little ice applied. So, what's the ice doing? I, mean, I, don't, that, I, I don't pretend to, to understand. Normal treatment for injuries when there is a tear and there is the likelihood of inflammation, uh, ice is applied immediately to the injury to reduce that inflammation. Uh, this uh, would not appear to be anything other than to try to recover from the heat and the fatigue. Is Stefano. Is that not coaching? And he's showing her what to do, and that certainly, in my mind, is coaching. My place. Right, the uh, official's just leaving the court. Now we're set to resume. That is an indication that Martina is really gone. A futile chase and uh, just an excuse for an attempted lob. Well, 15 
Ladies and gentlemen, please, for the players, can you switch off your mobile phone? Thank you. Oh, first foot fault of the match. And we did pick this a couple of games back, and it's noticeable. And we see the foot fault in replay there. She is just stepping by the narrowest margin on the line. It just became obvious uh, about two, two and a half games ago that 15, Hingis 14. was half a yard slow in moving. The second foot fault, 15-40. A weary Hingis. Football. A double and fault Cabrari. on foot faults. And the head drops. She Cabrari can't believe it. It's a break to Capriati. 4 2. Gee, that's so close. And Martina now emotionally distressed. The face distorting and uh, bravely trying to play on. Seed. Jennifer hasn't heard it. Fifteen all. Well, there's been some turnarounds in this match. I've lost count. I'd be really surprised if there's one more. Well, it mightn't be engineered by Hingis. It might be engineered by Capriati. This is as good 15, as, I think, 15. match point, this next point. That's out. That's a game. It's 5-2 in the third set to Jennifer Capriati. Look at the, uh, the lip. Yes, she's uh, trying bravely to hold it in, but uh, the physical fatigue has really just taken an enormous toll to the point of uh, dislodging her emotions. Defeat is written on the face, I'm afraid, of Martina Hingis. And Capriati, from what's transpired these last couple of games, seems to have drawn strength from that. Yes, well, she hasn't been asked to work hard at all in the last uh, three or four games, and this has allowed her to recover, or at least not her condition not to deteriorate. And also with the uh, optimism uh, that she would gain from looking at the scoreboard, it would fuel her that much more. As things close down for Martina Hingis. Can Martina Hingis lift herself back into the match from 2 5 in the third set? Oh. Hitting and hoping. It really does. Uh, I'm not sure that she's hoping that they go in. I think she's satisfied for them to go out so she can get off.
you. It's not a word I, I would use likely, but I can see surrender here. Capitulation, but it has just been, she has been beaten uh, by the conditions and by Jennifer Capriati, who conspired cruelly to deprive her of this championship. How Let's remarkable is this? Point. Two match points for Jennifer Capriati. Hingis herself had four match points in the second set. feet of endurance. <laughs> the crowd to a man, woman and child on their feet applauding. This adds a new dimension to the term survival of the fittest. It seemed lost for Capriati. At 5-3 in the second set, Hingis served and had match point. Capriati broke back. At 6-5 in the second set, Hingis had two match points and Capriati held serve to force the tiebreak. At seven points to six in the tiebreak, Hingis had match point. But Capriati would not be denied and took it nine points to seven. first before I can speak, I guess. <laughs> well, today I, I think I'm overwhelmed with feelings. I mean, and Jennifer was just too, get, too good today. Maybe if we had the Heineken beer in the cooler, that helped me to make the final point. <laughs> I think once again, I I had a good, wonderful time, a great tournament here in Australia and on Australia Day. So thanks for coming out here today and uh, celebrate with us this great match. Thank you. Well, I had a tough two, two months. I had just had came back from surgery and uh, I think I exceeded my expectations. Um, how I did last week and also at this tournament. So I don't know whether to be happy or to cry about it. So <laughs> I think I gotta choose, but I, I just gotta look forward and uh, hopefully you know, we have, we're have we gonna have many more finals like today and um, hope to have another revenge sometime soon. <laughs> and uh, well, thank you also to my mom, Mario. You're wonderful and um, for, for your support, I'd like to thank you, Anthony, for hitting with me. <laughs> and also my doctor back at home to, to sue me together so I can move freely now again. <laughs> um, yeah, I, it's just overwhelming. Thank you very much for coming out here and I'll be back.
A wonderful speech as always from Martina Hingis. Well, last year she started here, won our championship, went and won the French and had a terrific year in 2001. And today's a carbon copy. She was straight over to Dad to say, I've done it again. And she was straight on the mobile phone to say, I've done it again. What's she done? She's our champion for 2002, Jennifer Capriati. Thank you very much. Uh, I really didn't know if uh, I was going to make it today, but uh, I actually was drinking Heineken. You didn't know. <laughs> um, Martina, you're a great champion, and uh, even though I've just uh, I've won the last two times, I mean, it's going to take a while to get to your status, too. Uh, uh, being here already uh, six times in the finals, and uh, you know, it's just a tremendous effort, and uh, I, I really don't know how I won today. but. Uh, to say this is the hottest day uh, for 2002 is an understatement, I think. <laughs> um, yeah, I was struggling on the court today, but uh, I mean, it's, not, it's no comparison to, to a lot of friends that I have are struggling right now, and especially one in particular, I'd like to say, Darren, thanks for coming, and I love you. <laughs> And uh, of course, I'm very happy, my, my family here, my, my other part of my family, my mom is here this year, and it was just my dad this year, and hopefully next year my brother will be able to make it also. So I have everyone here. <laughs> and all my friends there, thank you for all the support, and uh, especially the fans, I think you, got, you helped me a lot make it through today and uh, help me win, and uh, I couldn't do it without you. So I just uh, I have to say, I give my love to you guys, and I uh, can't wait to come back again next year. Thank you. I just I can't I can't forget the the sponsors the new sponsor Kia and uh, and all the at uh, Sanex WTA tour and Heineken and uh, all the volunteers and all the ball kids I mean they were out there too suffering with us so thank you again to everybody Thank you, Jennifer, our champion for 2002, Jennifer Capriati. Well done. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our presentation ceremony. Coming up in a few minutes' time, it's the men's doubles final here on Rod Laver Arena. Oh, well done. It hardly seems adequate, does it? <laughs> for uh, an enormous effort. And Capriati, with the Daphne Ackhurst trophy in hand, and Martina Hingis, with a runner-up trophy back up to the dais again for the press photographers and they probably I think Jennifer might find the strength to raise the trophy aloft <laughs> it's going to be a struggle it will be a struggle and look they are sharing some uh, nice moments together there did seem to be some tension between the two during the match but all well, was, uh, put behind. I think that was understandable. There was a lot riding on it for both of them. One, the defending champion. One, having not won a Grand Slam since uh, here three years ago, which we've mentioned on so many occasions. Speaking of uh, great champions, Daphne Ackhurst, after whom the trophy was uh, named, winner here five times in the early 1920s, 25, 26, 28, 29, 30. So one of the greats of the game and one of the greats of the Australian Open Championship. And uh, Martina Hingis has already established herself as that. This is her sixth year in the final, three times the winner. Capriati, and there is the trophy. She's found the strength to do it. And the smile to go with it. 
I just hope that she can hang on to it. The 2002 champion, Jennifer Capriati, the winner over Martina Hingis in three sets, 4-6, 7-6, 6-2.